Hello, I'm Dr. Ron England, and I'm coming to you here from Daytona State College. I'm going to give you a, a lecture on something that uh, is near and dear to my heart, something I really like, which is simulation. And specifically, simulation as in computer simulation. So we're going to set up a hy hypothetical scenario that we can solve with computer simulation. I have a large field filled with rocks. And what I want to do is I want to take a vehicle and be able to autonomously drive it across that field. The only problem is, is that that autonomous vehicle doesn't have any sensors on it, so it can't tell where the rocks are. So all it can do is randomly turn left or right. So let's look at that scenario in a computer simulation. So here's my little rock garden that we so we should say, and I'm doing this as kind of as a game. And I've actually got four different vehicles: my red, green, blue, and pink one. And we'll go ahead and let those vehicles go across the uh, the rock across this. And as you can see they're randomly turning left and right which is kind of neat because what's going to happen is if they go in one direction they're eventually going to hit a rock and they're going to stop they're going to get caught and they won't be able to go any further so by allowing them to turn randomly left or right and of course they just do it randomly um, they are able to get across now I've got the parameters set up here for my field board length how many rocks do you have and how fast do I want this whole thing to run now in this case I've got the different players set to have randomly turn left five percent of the time and right five percent of the time that's what the red one does and if you notice that red path doesn't turn a whole lot I actually made it so you can see it the green turns more but it kind of just ended up going in a circle a little bit but that it would have changed the blue okay it made it across with 15% left and right. And then the pink, 20 and 20% 20 of the time it actually turns. So 40% of the time it's turning. Now, what's optimal here? What's the best percentage turning to get across a specific field where 10% of the space of the field is filled up with rocks that would stop it? Well, trying this one time is probably not going to tell you the answer to this. And this is where something like computer simulation comes in real real handy so let's change some of the parameters here let's first change the time step to five milliseconds I want to run this really fast and I want to play it 200 times a lot of times I'm gonna keep the same percentages I'm gonna recreate the board but now I'm gonna play the game and notice it's doing it really fast well it's doing it so fast I can't even see who's winning these games but nice thing is it's a computer. I can let the computer keep track of all this for me. So as it's running through this simulation, I can actually count how many times each type of player in this random situation actually wins the game. And as you can look here, you can see that the red player, which is actually turning the least 5% of the time, seems to be making it across the board more than the other players. So with 10% of the board being blocked, the player that's making turns 5% of the time and going straight most of the time tends to win the game more often than not. Now, how do I know this is actually true? Well, the way to tell that it's actually true is to play this game a lot. So now we've actually gone through the game 140 times, but I could go through this game thousands and thousands of times because, well, it's a computer computer doesn't care running it over and over and over and over again um, and I can run it even faster this is the concept of computer simulation you write a computer program which simulates what happens in the real life you have it run through all the scenarios and it can pick out the best strategies for winning in all the different scenarios well now that it's done running through this game 200 times I can see that red beat the other ones 71 times out of 200 or roughly 35 percent of the time whereas green the next green and blue were roughly 25 percent of the time so this was able to tell me with a simple computer program how well does this work and it allows you to see the effectiveness of simulation by the way this is this code for this and the game itself is available online and if you look I also have the inspiration for this specific one which is that scene in the movie war games if you've ever seen the movie war games with matthew broderick while he was very young 
um, you'll remember a scene at the very end of that where Whopper, the computer, runs through hundreds of simulations for thermonuclear war and realizes in the end that it doesn't win in any of the simulations and learns that this is not an effective strategy, that the only way to win the game is not to play. Of course, the way I put it isn't anywhere near as good as watching the actual movie. So go out there and watch the movie War Games, and you can now see at least a little bit of why computer simulation is such a powerful tool for figuring out what will happen in different scenarios. Thank you very much, and for those programmers out there, good programming.